Hi, I'm Daniel Crumback, Head of Science and Education at Pinoe. Welcome to the Pinoe Medical Case Review video podcast series. Pinoe created this video podcast series in order to explore how metabolic analysis can either identify potential medical conditions or visualize the ramifications of pre-existing medical conditions on function and performance. We will present case reviews demonstrating how either of these situations were isolated through metabolic testing and then discuss how medical interventions and or an appropriate exercise prescription help to improve function or performance. We hope you enjoy the series. Welcome to the Pinoe Podcast. I'm Daniel Crumback, Head of Science and Education at Pinoe. Today, our guest is Jason Lamond. He's uh, from Atlantic Canada, and he works with uh, chronic disease patients. And today we are going to review uh, a few cases in which we are able to either identify a potential uh, medical condition or that we recognize the limitations secondary to a uh, pre-existing medical condition. Uh, welcome, Jason. Thanks, Daniel. You know, well, we'll start off the normal way, uh, you know, talk to our, our listeners and let them know uh, who you are, your education, your background. Okay. Um, well, I first did a physical education degree at Memorial University in Newfoundland. Uh, that's where I first started uh, doing physiological testing um, with, with athletes uh, specifically. Um, then I went on to do a degree in occupational therapy at Queen's University in Ontario um and still work as an occupational therapist um and then i went on to now i'm just finishing up my master's in uh occupational therapy and finish up my thesis at dalhousie um yeah excellent and you've been you've been doing uh, physiological testing for quite a while and you have you combine using uh, metabolic analysis with Pinoe uh with uh, neuroinfrared spectroscopy from MOXIE. Can you tell uh, our listeners a little bit about the benefits of, of working with these together? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I really like seeing both. I, I, as you mentioned, I, I work, uh, I have the opportunity to work with like uh, some people who are involved, recreational athletes, as well as uh, people that have chronic disease. Um, and, and chronic disease um, is probably more common than we would realize, I think, as healthcare professionals. So, um, but uh, so using that, actually, by working with people like that, we're able to identify limitations using both. And so some of the examples we're going to go through will really illustrate that. I think it's generally thought of as, you know, oh, it's only for athletes, whereas I've actually found that it's been fantastic to um, pick up on limitations, uh, you know, that have gone back to the individual's uh, primary care physician or uh, you know when they want to start exercising how to individualize that specifically so what i really like about pinoe uh, in particular um is the platform so you know back in the day um and so i was doing that testing in the mid 90s i guess um you know you had the dot paper coming out and uh and so you really uh were missing a lot of the data uh and whereas now with Pinoe in the platform it's just you know live real time and you can see you know the the, the measures are put together for, uh, for you um, and then uh, you can really pick up on everything you know so you can see if it's a delivery limitation or a utilization limitation um, and uh, and go from there yeah I think uh, that, that was the frustration of people that were doing metabolic analysis before was the fact that it would pit, it would spit out like a VO2 max and, and a calculated VT2 or anaerobic threshold, but it would eat all the respiratory data. Like you would not get individual data specific to looking at all the three systems that it analyzes the cardio, cardiovascular system, the respiratory and the muscle metabolism. And uh, you'd almost get nothing from muscle metabolism. And despite the fact that all that information was within the device, it was measuring everything. But uh, yeah, they, they never uh, never actualize the information in, into something that would identify different limitations by system. So I, yeah. this is uh, where you know having not having to export you know TXT and, and CSV files into a spreadsheet and then uh, be able to create reports. You know, having that platform is is a real gift. That's for sure. Yeah, it's been amazing. I mean, 
Well, I started with my professional fitness lifestyle consultant, like like you did, I'm sure, with the Canadian Society of Extra Physiology, and then getting to the physiological testing, you know, after we did that physiological certification. And you see the difference also now with Moxie because it was lactate. So remember, they used to have these position statements on how you could do lactate analysis on folks. And, and so then we move into balance point, and that's invasive, right? Um, whereas, again, it's, it's together with, with both of those tools. It's just right there. Um, well, we, yeah. We're also wanting a direct measure, and that's, you know, people don't realize that lactate's an indirect measure. You're not really looking for lactate to rise. You're looking at for it to represent something else. Mm-hmm. You know, a change in fuel systems, um, and you don't you don't need that information. You can get that directly from metabolic analysis. And the addition of the moxie for the direct measure of delivery and utilization at the muscle in question, uh, they're 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 just perfect together, and they they'll just confirm. But you still need all the information if you just test with moxie you're not going to pick up a respiratory limitation, which will, uh, can, can really affect, uh, how utilize utilization looks. But mm-hmm. If you don't recognize it as being a respiratory limitation, that's leading to an issue with the oxygen offloading at the muscle, you're going to assume that it's a utilization issue when it's not. So I, I love how they work together. And, uh, even our first case, is uh, a respiratory issue uh, that was picked up using a combination of metabolic analysis and NEARS information. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna share a screen, bring up the platform to this individual. You do you mind introducing who this individual is and how he came to you? Okay, yeah. Uh, so this individual, and I'm just if I look away because I'm looking at my screen at the same time, uh, I think he was uh, 60, that's 66 male, um, so yeah, there you go. Uh, you have his, um, kinematic, it's his arthro, uh, metric there. Um, he, uh, he initially came referred by, uh, his uh, specialist, um, because of, uh, shortness of breath and fatigue. Um, and, uh, they really had no explanation. They thought maybe he was just unfit. So the guy was actually quite active, uh, very little cardiovascular activity, but still, uh, a lot of resistance training. Uh, so, uh, we proceeded to put him through, um, a ramp test. Um, so you can see there, um, the, the outcome. And so maybe if you want to explain yeah. some of the physiology before I, well, let's orient everybody to, uh, to the platform. So this is a, uh, treadmill ramp test. It consists of, uh, I'll bring up the, uh, speeds so you get a chance to see, uh, it consists of a three minute warm up uh, followed by uh, increasing speeds every one minute until exhaustion so you can see the speeds going through here uh, followed by a two minute inactive recovery and this is our standard kind of nine to 12 minute ramp test that we do to be able to identify um, limitations and how they perform at different intensities so just remember the three the this color here represents three minute warm up this color represents uh, increasing ramp test every one minute, and this color represents the, uh, re- the recovery. I'll get rid of speed so we can get rid of some of the, of the colors here. On the screen right now, a heart rate is represented here, and you can see uh, here the legend for the different colors. Um, the, I'll go through the metrics from the metabolic analysis. So the heart rate came through metabolic analysis and then you'll also see breathing frequency and tidal volume and tidal volume or VT is the liters per breath they're breathing and uh, BF is breathing frequency or the breaths they're taking per minute. BF are represented by the blue here and the tidal volumes are represented here and they're in liters. If you're looking for the scale, they're off the side here. Um, from the MOXIE, you're going, you get uh, what they refer to as THB, which is really the density of hemoglobin at, uh, at the myoglobin within the muscle. So it's a, the MOX is a very small device that we can attach directly to the muscle. In this particular case, the vastus lateralis, and uh, they're in uh, they're in grams per deciliter. So the grams of hemoglobin per deciliter of blood. And then you'll see a yellow line here, which is referred to as their SMO2. 
and that's the percentage of their hemoglobin loaded with oxygen. And we can, we can use this as an idea of how well they're delivering and utilizing oxygen at the muscle. And we can use this as a surrogate for blood flow or what's going on as far as blood flow uh, within the cardiovascular system. Uh, and remember the cardiovascular system does not work independently of the respiratory system, but responds strongly to changes in the respiratory system itself. So you've got uh, five metrics up here. Uh, two of them are MOXIE, three are metabolic analysis. Now, if we look at this, um, because the person uh, was describing uh, a respiratory issue, we wanted to do spirometry to determine whether the person had a limitation at rest. So um, we end up doing spirometry. How did the spirometry work out for this, this particular test? His, uh, his spirometry went uh, well, actually. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the things that you discuss in the course uh, about doing spirometry testing with everyone, uh, ideally prior to. Um, and his, his uh, spirometry actually worked out uh, within the norm, uh, which was really interesting. Um, it would have put him in the, in the very good, I suppose, better than good. Um, so using the GLI numbers. Um, um, yeah, so that was that was fantastic uh, for him. The first thing, we, first thing you do is you do spirometry. You'll know the respiratory capacity is okay, and you're and you're thinking to yourself automatically. His major complaint is respiratory, yet he has volumes within normal limits. Having uh, volumes within normal limits uh, at rest does not mean that they can use it well uh, during activity. Uh, a classic case would be exercise to do bronchospasm, spasm, asthma, uh, with higher level, higher breathing frequencies, irritation of the airway, leading to difficulty moving the same amount of volume. And how did he? How did his respiratory system uh, respond during exercise? Yeah. So this is this is one of those great examples where having both tools was really helpful because as you're moving along there, you can see his uh, his VT. And it was actually really good. Um, so if you look at what are you getting there, three point uh, three nine, and yeah, 3. yeah. almost three point five liters per breath. Yeah, and and he's his VE uh, FEV one was um, three point three nine. Um, so that's based on the testing. The norm would have been three point three seven. So he's he's hammering that. Everything um, everything looks. Really good. So you go in again, respiratory complaints, good capacity, good capability, yeah. he uses the volume that he has well. Um, he does not have a tendency to hyperventilate at all. No. Um, so you're, you're, left, you're left scratching your head. Like, what is, what is the issue here? And, and this is where you differentiate kind of, some people use pulmonary system and respiratory system the same. And I, I, when I look at the respiratory system, I think of ventilation, so frequency and uh, volume. Whereas yeah. it looks like there, his issue would be a sense of breathlessness uh, at the limb. So then we would look and say, well, maybe there's a pulmonary issue or a cardiovascular issue related to the hemoglobin. And I, I'm a weird guy. I really tell people, Hemoglobin is part of the cardiovascular system. So um, what's nice is we can have a look at the performance of his delivery versus utilization uh, at the muscle by looking at the moxie. Mm -hmm. And one thing you'll notice here is uh, when he starts off, uh, you know, from rest through to the first part of a very low intensity warm up. He only 40% of his hemoglobin is loaded with oxygen. And then normally what you'll see is it will be going, it should go up because you're stimulating delivery more than you're utilizing. So therefore it should go up significantly. And we're, we're looking for 70, 80% here, not 53%. And then by, as the intensities go up, he's left with only uh, just over 7% of his hemoglobin do, uh, having oxygen. So this, again, to, to a person may feel like breathless legs, right? They just, they, they don't seem to be able to get the oxygen there. 
And since we've proven that he has good respiratory capacity and capability, his ventilation's fine. My first question to Jason was, does this guy have an iron deficiency? Meaning is, is the cardiovascular component that could lead to this, the health of the hemoglobin been affected? And Jason? Yeah, so he, he, that was one of the things we followed up on um, and he did have a, a digestive complaints. That was the initial referral to his physician uh, and iron, low arm was identified. Um, that's some clinic I would say I would check when anybody has any digestive complaints. I've noticed that quite a bit, that they often have an iron deficiency. Um, and because I've seen it on the tests as well, like hemoglobin, issues with hemoglobin. Um, but in this case, yeah, he he had low iron, but it was corrected by the time he did the test. So so on blood work, it was it had improved, but we still see, yeah. That was, I mean, that was the, a great conversation. You go, okay, we... Uh, it would have been my first recommendation would be uh, go in and, and do a ferric test to find out his iron levels. Um, it had been identified, it had been addressed, and the numbers were then normal. Then you go, okay, but there's still something limiting the ability of the oxygen, and this is the pulmonary side, the ability of the oxygen to transfer from the lung onto the hemoglobin. And uh, so we... We rechecked all of our numbers, stated this makes no sense. We have really good delivery. Um, there's no hyperventilation. There's no low iron issue at this particular point. Uh, we recommended further investigation. And uh, what happened, Jason? Yeah, so I, the uh, gentleman ended up, I referred him back to his uh, internist or specialist. And they followed a CAT scan and found that he had bilateral pulmonary embolisms. So... Um, so now he's waiting for surgery. I think just, yeah, it's interesting because even with just looking at the chart, as I look at the graph, you can see how hemoglobin at the end is trying to, the, the body's trying to compensate, um, you know, and, uh, and you see that spike and yet SMO2 is going down. Um, you know, it's continue to go down. So you can kind of see, you know, why isn't it loading? Um, so that was, we, I think we stood out for us in that conversation as well was a part of that right um just to point that out uh, for folks um yeah so he uh he was grateful um you know so in the end it wasn't so much about being unfit i mean because his vo2 if you just look at the vo2 which would have been the old like the old data before we would have had this platform and the use of both instruments we would have seen oh his vo2 is i think it was like 20 right so he's just unfit um and we would have missed uh, all the details, right? But uh, you kind of miss it on that central governor, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the, uh, you know, number one, um, you know, having the data available, but also having it graphically represented, the ability to, to be able to select uh, any of the metrics that you wish uh, to be able to bring up on the graph and the education program teaching all the Panoe owners how to be able to do this. Um, the, uh, I think that's probably the most important thing is there's so much information that's available uh, with metabolic analysis data. You combine it with Moxie and, and, and you can find these types of cases in which you're potentially saving people's lives. Yeah, yeah, this guy was happy. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, surgery goes well and uh, I would look forward to seeing his uh, retest data when he's ready to come in post-surgery and get moving with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, I'm wishing all the best on the surgery. Well, thank you, Jason, for sharing this case. Yeah, thank you. To book a sales consult, contact Panoe Sales at info at mypanoe.com. To learn more about our products and services, attend our three-part Panoe webinar series Register by contacting Zoe at zoe at mypanoe.com. To learn more about the Panoe Metabolic Analysis Certification Program, view our video at community.mypanoe.com or contact Zoe at zoe at mypanoe.com. And don't forget to join us on Instagram.